Jungle Tales of Tarzan by Edgar Rice Burroughs Chapter 3 The Fight of the Bayou Chica had become a mother. Tarzan of the Apes was intensely interested, much more so in the fact that Tug, the father, Tarzan, was very fond of Tika, even the cares of protective motherhood had not entirely quenched the fires of carefree youth. Tika had remained a good-natured playmate, even at an age where other she's a tribe of Koenig had assumed the sudden dignity of the maturity. She yet retained her childish delight in primitive games of tag and hide-and-seek, which Tarzan's fruit of man mind had evolved. To play tag for the treetops is an exciting, inspiring pastime. Tarzan delighted in it. But the bulls of his childhood had long since abandoned such childish practices. Tika, though, been keen for it, always until shortly before the baby came. But with the advert of the firstborn, even Tika changed. The evidence of change surprised and hurt Tarzan immeasurably. One morning he saw Tika squatted upon a low branch, hugging something very close to a hairy breast, a wee something which squirmed and wiggled. Tarzan approached the field of curiosity, which is common of all creatures a day with brains, which have progressed beyond the microscopic stage. Tika rolled her eyes in his direction, strained and squirmed, might still closer to him. Tarzan came nearer. Tika drew away and dread her fangs. Tarzan was nonplussed. In all experience of Tika, never before he did her, she bared fangs at him, other than play, but today she she did not look playful. Tarzan ran his brown fingers through his thick black hair, cocked his head upon his one side and stared. He edged a bit nearer, craning his neck to have a better look at the thing which Tika cuddled. Again Tika drew away her upper lip and a warning snarl. Tarzan reached forth, hand curiously to touch the thing which Tika held, and Tika, with a hideous growl, turned suddenly upon him. And he sunk into the flesh of his forearm, for the ape man could snatch away, snatch away, and she pursued him a short distance, retreating incontinently through the trees. But Tika, carrying a baby, would not, could not overtake him. A safe distance, Tarzan stopped and turned to regard his as well plain fellow in unconcealed astonishment. What had happened to go to all, so to alter the gentle Tika? She had so covered the thing in her arms that Tarzan had not been able to recognise it for what it was. But now, as he turned from the pursuit of him, he saw it, for his pain and shenanigan. Again, he smiled, for Tarzan had been yet seen young eight mothers before. A few days, she would be less suspicious. Tarzan, still Tarzan was hurt. It was not right for that Tika of all the others should have fear him. Why not? For the world... Would he harm her or her blue, which is a name for baby? And now, after the pain of his injured arm and the hurt of his pride, Rosa still stronger tonight to come close, inspect the newborn son of Tug. Possibly, you will wonder what Tarzan H, mighty fighter, that he was, should have fled for a to attack of such she. Or that he should hesitate to return for satisfaction for his curiosity, when with ease he might have vanished the vacant mother, the newborn cub. But you need not wonder. Were you an ape, you would know that only a bull and frozen madness throw open a female. Madness to turn upon a female other than to gently criticize her, with the occasional exception of the individual whom you find is empted among her own kind. Our own kind, a lights and beating up his fellow better half, because he happens to be smaller and weaker than he. So again came full towards the young mother, warily with his line retreat safely open. Can take a growl ferociously, Tarzan explosilated. Tarzan eats will not harm Tigger's baloo. He said, "Let me see it." Go away, commanded Tigger. Go away, or I'll kill you. Will kill you. Let me see it, urged Tarzan. Go away, we are led to the sea ape. Here comes Tug. He will make you go away. Tug will kill you. This is Tug's balloon. Savage growl, close behind him, a 
grazed Tarzan on the nearness of Doug. In fact, the bull had heard the warnings of threats his mate was coming to a call. To a call. The tiger as well as Tinker had been Tarzan playfiller, while the bull was still young enough to wish to play. One sudden say Tug's life, but the memory of an ape is not over long. Nor was gratitude raised above the parental instinct. Tarzan Tag had once measured strength. Tarzan had been victorious. In fact, Tag could be what could be de- could be be dependent upon still to remember, but even so he might really face another defeat with his firstborn if he chanced to be in a proper mood mood mood. His hideous growls now there rose in strength of volume. He seemed to be in quite the mood, but Tarzan felt no fear for, of Tag, nor did unwritten Lord of Jungle demand that he should flee from battle for, with, any, with any meal, unless he cared to have purely personal reasons. But Tarzan liked Tag, in a grudge against him. His man mind told him what the mind of an ape would never have deduced, that Tag's attitude in no sense indicated hatred. It was by instinctively urge of the male to protect his offspring and its mate. Tarzan had no desire had Tarzan had no desire with about to battle Tag, nor did the blood of English ancestors relish the thought of fight. Yet when the bull charged, Tarzan leaped nimbly to one side and thus encouraged. Tag wheeled and rushed again madly to attack. Tarzan, perhaps in memory of the past defeat, and Tarzan's hands goaded him, perhaps the fat Tika sat there watching him aroused the desire to vanish the ape man for her eyes the beast of every jungle male lurks of vast egotism his fees expression in a performance of deeds of daring do before an audience of, of the opposite sex at the ape man's swing side swung swung his long grass rope the plaything yesterday the weapon of today to take charge the second time Tarzan slipped the coils over his head and stealthily shook out the sliding noose. He again nimbly eluded the ungainly beast. For they could turn away again, so it could turn again. Tarzan fled far among the loft among the branches to the upper terrace. Tagno wrought to frenzy of real rage followed him. Tika peered onward, upward at them. It was difficult to say whether she was interested. Tag could not climb as rapidly as Tarzan. So the latter reached the high levels to which the heavy ape dared not follow before the former overtook him. There he halted, looked down upon his pursuer, making faces at him, calling him such choice names as occurred to the fertile, fertile main brain. Then, when he had worked Toga, took to, much, to, much, to such a pitch of foaming rage, the great bull fairly danced upon the bending limb. Beneath him, Tarzan's hands shot suddenly forward, a widening loose dropped swiftly for the air. A quick jerk as it settled about Tug, falling to his knees. A jerk that tightened its securely about the hairy legs of the arthropod. Tarzan's tag, slow of wit, realised too late the tension of his tormentor. He scrambled to escape. The eight men gave his rope a tremendous jerk, pulled Tag from his perch. A moment later, growling and hideously, a grape hung the head downward thirty feet above the ground. Tarzan accrued the rope to a stout limb and descended to point close to Tag. Tag, he said, you're stupid as Boto, the rhinoceros. Now you may hang here till you get a little sense of your thick hide. You may hang here and watch while I go and talk with Tika. Tag blustered and threatened, but Tarzan only grinned at him, and he dropped lightly to the lower levels. Here he again approached Tag Tika, only began greeted with bare fangs and grimacing growls. He sought to facilitate her. He urged her heard his friendly intentions, and craned his neck to take a look at Tika's balloon, but she was not to be persuaded that he meant other than to harm her to a little one. Her motherhood was so so new reason yet subservient to instinct. Rear's eyes in fertility of attempting to catch a testized Tarzan. Tiga sought to escape him. He dropped to the ground and lumbered across the little clearing about which the apes of the tribe were disposed in rest or in search of food, and presently Tarzan abandoned his attempts to persuade her to commit a close examination of Baloo. The ape-man could have liked 
would have liked to handle the tiny thing. The very sight of it awakened his beast, a strange yearning. He wished to cuddle and fondle the grotesque little ape thing, a tinker's balloon, Tarzan, and once lavished this young affections upon Tika. Now his attention was diverted by the voice of Tug, and threats had been filled at ape's mouth. A turn to please, a tightening noose, a stopping circulation of blood, his legs, he beginning to suffer. So Wake sat near him, lightly interested in his predicament, and made uncomplimentary remarks about him, for each of them had felt the weight of Tug's mighty hands, the strength of his great jaws, of enjoying revenge. Tig had seen that Tarzan had turned back towards the trees, and all in the centre of the clearing, where she sat hugging a balloon and casting suspicious glances here and there. With the coming of the balloon, Tigger's carefree world had, had suddenly become peopled with innumerable enemies, showing sure implacable foe in Tarzan. Always with they here for, for her best friend, even poor Muggler, half blind, almost entirely toothless, searching so places for grub worms beneath a full lock, represented a malignant spirit, first thing full of blood of the little balloons. While Tigger guarded suspicious against harm. There was no harm. She failed to note two baithful green, yellow-green eyes staring fixed at her from behind a clump of bushes up its side of the clearing. Hello from hunger. Sheeta, the panther, gathered legs greedily at the tempest meat so close at hand, but sight the great bull beyond gave him pause. Ah, if the she with her blue would but come just a trifle nearer, a quick spring he would be upon him and away again with his meat before the balls could prevent. The tip of his tawny tail moved in spasmodic little jerks. His lower jaw hung low, boasting a red tongue and yellow fangs. But all his tigger did not see, nor did any other the apes, were feeding or resting about her, nor did Tarzan the apes in or the apes in the tree, or nor did Tarzan the apes in the trees. He only boosted from the balls were pouring from the hapless tug. Hearing the boost from the which had pulled, balls were pouring upon the helpless tug, Tarzan clambered among, quickly among them. One was getting close and leaning far out in an effort to reach the dangling rope. He had worked himself into quite a fury for recollection of the last occasion upon which tug had mauled him. Now he was bent upon a revenge. More, once he grasped the swinging ape, he could quickly have drawn him Within reach of his jaws, Tarzan saw, and it and was wolf. He loved for fair and light fight, but the thing which the ape contemplated revolted him. Already, a hairy hand had clutched the helpless tag. When, with an angry pro- pro- growl protest, Tarzan leaped to branch of the ape attacking each side, but a single mighty cuff sent him from his perch. The prize and raised the bull clutched madly for support as he toppled sideways. Then an angle movement succeeded in protecting himself, protecting himself towards another limb a few feet below. He found on a quick handhold, quickly ridged himself, and quickly clambered upon, and quickly clambered upon upward to revenge, revenge upon Tarzan. But eight man was otherwise engaged, and did not wish to be interrupted. Explaining again to tag the depths of Latter's abysmal ignorance, and pointing out how much greater and mightier that was Tarzan, the apes, and Tag, or any other ape. In the end, he could, would release Tag, not until Tag was fully equated with his own inferiority. And then a man and bull came from beneath, and instantly Tarzan was te- transformed from a good-natured teasing youth to snarling sing- savage beast. Among, along, along his scalp the hair bristled, his upper limb drew back, that his fighting fangs might be uncovered and ready. He did not wait for the bull to reach him, for something in the appearance of the voice of the attacker aroused within the ape man a feeling of belligerent antiquarism that could not be denied. With a scream that carried no human note, Tarzan leapt forward at the throat of the attacker. Proceeding impetuously of his act, a weight and momentum of his body carried the bull backward, clutching and clawing for support, down for the leafy branches of the tree. For fifteen feet the two fell, Tarzan's teeth buried in juggler with his opponent, when a stout branch stopped their descent. The bull struck upon struck full upon the small of his back across the limb, hung there for a moment with the ape man still upon his breast, and toppled over towards the ground. 
Tarzan had felt the instantaneous relaxation of the body beneath him, after the heavy impact with the tree limb. As the other turned completely over and started again upon its fall towards the ground, he reached forth a hand and caught the branch in time to stay his own descent, while it dropped like a plummet to the foot of the tree. Tarzan looked downward for a moment upon the foot of still form of his late antagonist. Then he rose his full height, swelled his deep tress, swaddled about it, upon it, with clenched fists, and roared out the uncanny challenge of the victorious bull ape. He receded a panther crouched for a spring at the edge of a little clearing, mood and wearily, easily. The mighty voice sent the weir, its weird cry, burdening anything from the jungle, to right and left. Now as he glanced into, as though reassuring himself, the way escape lay already in hand. I am Tarzan the Apes, boasted the ape man. Mighty hunter, mighty fighter, none in all the jungle was so great as Tarzan. Then he made his way back to Dretch and Tag. Tika had watched the happenings in the tree. She had even placed her precious balloon upon the grass, soft grass, came a little cloak nearer. She might better witness all that was passing in the branches above her. In her heart of hearts, she did not. She did she still steam, smooth skin Tarzan? Did a savage beast swell with pride to witness his victory of the ape? You'll have to ask Tika. The sheet of the panther saw that she ape had left her cub alone among the paraces. He moved his, his tail again, as though his closest approximation of lashing, in which he dared indulge, most similar to his momentary reined courage. The cry of victory ape man still held his nerves beneath his spell. His spell could be several minutes before he again would could bring himself to the point of charging into view the great apropods. He regathered his forces, Tarzan reached Tag's side, and then clambering high up the point where the end of the rope the cross rope remained fast, he unloosened it and lowered the ape slowly downward, swinging him in till clutching hands fastened upon the limb. Quickly Tag drew himself to a position of safety, shook off the noose. His raged man and heart, he had no room for gratitude to the ape man. He called any fact that Tarzan laid his painful indignity upon him. He would be revenged, but not at present. His limbs are so numb, his head so dizzy, he might postpone the gratification of his vengeance. Quickly Tag drew himself to position of safety and shook off the noose. His rage Rage made him hurt, he had no room for gratitude for the ape man. He recalled only the fact that Tarzan laid a painful indignity upon him. He would, would be revenged, but at present his limbs were so numb, his head was so busy, he would persone the gratification of his vengeance. Tarzan was coiling his rope while he lectured Tug on the fertility of pitting his poor powers, physical and intellect, against those of his betters. Tika had come clo- close beneath the tree and was peering upward. Cheetah was worming his way stealthily forward, barely close to the ground. The other moment he would be clear of the underbrush, and ready for a rapid charge and quick retreat that would end the brief existence of Tika's balloon. Then Tarzan chanced to look up across the clearing instantly his attitude of good natured bantering, ponderous bothiness dropped from him. Silent and swiftly he shot downward to toward the ground. Cheetah, seeing him coming, thinking he was after a balloon, brisked and prepared to fight, but Tarzan sped by her. As he went awry, he followed him. He saw the cause of his sudden descent, his rapid charge across the clearing. Then in full sight now was Sita, a panther stalking slowly towards the tiny wiggling balloon, which lay among the grasses many yards away. Tika gave voice to a shrill scream of terror, warning she dashed after the ape man. Sita saw Tarzan coming. He saw the she-ape's cub before him. He thought this was his other was bent over, robbing him his prey. With angry growl, he charged. Tag, warned by Tika's cry, came lumbering down to assistance. Several other bulls growling and barking closed in towards clearing. They were all much farther from the balloon and the panther than was Tarzan of the apes. So it was that she and the ape men reached Tika's little one almost simultaneously. There they stood once, one more upon each other side of it, either side of it, bearing their fangs and snarling at each other, over the little creature. Cheetah was afraid 
to seize Baloo for thus he would give Ickman an opening for attack. And for the same reason Tarzan had it, he'd have snatched the pamphlet's prey out of Baal's way. Had he stopped to accomplish this, stooped to accomplish this, a great peace would have been upon him in an instant. Thus they stood while Tika came across the clearing, going more slowly as she neared a panther, for even her mother would love would scarce overcome the instinct of terror and his natural enemy of her kind. Behind a tag, wearily, with mighty pulses, much bluster, and still behind him came other bulls, snaring ferociously and uttering their uncunning challenges. Cheetah's yellow-green eyes glared terribly at Tarzan and passed Tarzan. They shot brief glances at the apes of Tarakayak, advancing upon him, descent, dissension, prompted him to turn and flee, but hunger, close by a tempting morsel, the grass before him urged him to remain. He reached for forth a paw towards Beliga Blue. As he did so, the savage grunt of Tarzan ape was upon him. A panther reared to meet the eight men's attack. He sprang a pain, fearful, raking blow for Tarzan. He would have wiped his face away, but he landed. But he did not land for Tarzan, ducked beneath it, closed his long knife ready in one strong hand, knife of his dead father, a father he never had known. Easy blue was forgotten by Sheeta and the panther. He now thought only of tearing the ribbons, his powerful talons, the flesh of his antagonist, of burying his long yellow fangs in a soft, smooth hide. The ape men, the Tarzan fought before the clawed creatures of the jungle, but now. He battled with fang monsters, nor, nor always had he come away unscathed. He knew the risk he ran, but Tarzan apes injured, 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 to the sight of his suffering, the death shrank from neither, for he feared neither. The instant he dodged beneath Sheeta's blow, he leaped to the beach rear, then fall upon the tawny neck, back, and fall upon the tawny back, burying his teeth. And she to his neck, the fingers of one hand and fur of her throat. With the other hand he drove his blade and Sheena's side. Over and over the grass rolled Sheena, growling and screaming, clawing and biting, mad if it dislodged an antagonist or get some portion of his body within the range of teeth or talons. Tarzan leapt to close quarters with his panther. Tika ran quickly in and snatched her balloon. Now she sat upon a high branch, safe at harm's way, cuddling the little thing close to her hairy breast. And while the savage little eyes bored down upon the contestants of the clearing, through his voice, those tag and the other bulls leaped into melee. Thus goaded the bulls came closer, redoubling their hideous clander. But Sita was already significantly enraged. He did not even hear them. Was his eating partially dislodging the eight men from his back, so the Tarzan swung for an instant in front of those awful talons. In that brief instant before him, he regained his former hold. A raking blow from a from a high paw laid open one leg from hip to knee. The sight and smell of his blood, possibly, which wrought upon the sight of circling apes, but it was Tag who really was responsible for the thing they did. Tag but a moment before, filled with rage, tore Tarzan and Leeds, too close to the battling pair, his red and wicked little eyes glared at them. I was passing his savage brain. Did he gloat over the unbearable position of his recent tormentor? Did he long to see Sheeta's straight great fangs sink in the soft throat of the eight men? Or did he realise courageous and selfishness that prompted Tarzan rush to the rescue of peril his life for Tigger's Baloo? But Tag's little Baloo gratitude possession of man only a man only or do the lower orders know it also with the spilling of Tarzan blood Tag answered these questions with all the weight of his great body leaped hideously growling upon Sita his little fighting fangs buried themselves in the white f- throat his powerful arms beat and clawed at a soft fur until a few he flew upon the jungle breeze, but tags his ample before them. The bulls charged for bearing Sheena, beneath rendering fangs of filling all the forest, the wild din of their battle cries. Ah, but it's wondrous and inspiring sight. They battled with the primordial apes and a great white ape man, with their ancestral foe, Sheeta, the Panther. 
In frenzy of excitement, Tika fairly danced upon a limb which swayed beneath her great weight. She urged upon on the males of her people, and Taka Mugura and Kikampa, the others she's a tribe of Kanek, added in shrill cries of fierce barkings her pandemonium, which now reigned within the jungle. Bidding and biting, tearing and torn, she to battle for his life. But the odds were against him. Even the lion was said to have attacked an equal number of great bulls of tribe of Kanek. Now half a mile away, hearing the sounds of terrific battle, the king of the beasts rose uneasily with his midday slumber, sunk off further into the jungle. Presently she had a tall and bloody body, ceased in the transatlantic struggles. Stiff and spanned remotely, twitched and still, yet the balls continued to serrate, until again, until the beautiful coat was torn to shreds. At last they desisted from sheer physical weariness, and when from the tangled bloody bodies rose, crimson giant, straight as an arrow. He placed the foot upon the dead body of the panther, and lifting his blood-stained face to blue, the equally heavens, gave voice to the horrid victory cry of a bull ape. By and by one, his hairy fellows, the tribe of Koenig, followed his example. Then she came down from his purchase of safety and struck the old dead body of Zeta. The young apes fought a battle with mimicry of their ability elders. Tiko was close enough to Tarzan. He turned and saw a, a blue hug close to his hairy chest. They had put his hands to take the little one, expecting that Tika would bear her fangs and spring upon him. But instead, she placed blue in his arms. Coming nearer, licked his frightful right wounds. Pretty Tag escaped with only a few scratches. Graham squat, came and squatted beside Tarzan and watched him. As he played with a little blue. At last, he too leaned over and helped Tika with cleansing the healing of the ape man's hurt. 